Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing? It is Thursday afternoon. We are here for our uh, PPC training webinar. It is going to be led by Mr. Carl Bartling, right? Oh, other side next to me over there in the, uh, in the window. Uh, we're on a minute or two early here. We're just going to let a few more people trickle in. How are you doing today, Carl? Are you ready to lead this thing? Oh, yeah. Doing well. How about yourself, Bobby? Doing very good. Looks nice, like nice. Got, uh, almost 100 people waiting to go here, waiting for you to impart all of your SEO knowledge for 2021 on the PPC <laughs> knowledge there, Bobby. PPC. PPC knowledge. <laughs> Uh, how's everyone doing? Where is everyone from? Yeah, where's everyone watching from today? Miami, nice. Maryland, Philly, Croatia, Austin, Texas, Toronto, Pakistan. To Philadelphia. Probably a little colder there. We're uh, we're bundled up down in Florida today. It's a uh, brisk 61 degrees. <laughs> yeah, we're that's pushing for us. Yeah, we gotta get the coats out for that one. Man, we got people all over the all over the world. Wow, well, we got Max right in Tampa. In there your backyard, you maybe look in the chat. What's going on, Max? North Carolina, Tom from North Carolina, Oscar from California, Toronto. Toronto, I visited there a few years ago. Love it. Great place to go if you haven't been yet. <laughs> India. Awesome. All right. Well, it is two o'clock. I'd say let's get this party started here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick introduction, and then I'm going to take myself off the screen because, again, Carl's the main event here. Uh, my name is Bobby Bishop. I'm the marketing manager here at the Hoff. Um, I host a lot of our webinars, a lot of our SEO ones, but this one is on PPC, and we have our resident PPC expert, director extraordinaire, Carl Bartling here, uh, who's going to be talking about um, some things we're seeing in PPC right now and how you can kind of best prepare for 2021 with some of your campaigns. So with that, I'll pass it on to you, Carl. Go ahead and All right. What's going on, everyone? What's going on? My name is Carl Bartling. I'm the PPC manager here at the Hoth. Thank you, Bobby, for the introduction. I'm super excited to share um, about an hour or so with you guys today. We have um, 100 plus people on, on right now live, so that's very exciting. So uh, let's dive on into this. I'll share my screen and we'll get going. Yes, and I will take myself off the screen as well. And by the way, if you have any questions as we go, I'll, I will be in the chat here. Go ahead and drop any questions in there. Um, if, yeah. it, if it's something I don't know, I'll probably just save it till the end. We're going to have a and a at the end as well. Um, if it's something small that I, I do know, I'll go ahead and answer that the best I can. So, just Awesome. To, thanks. Yeah. thanks so much, Bobby. Just a quick uh, little check-in before we go. Can everyone hear me good? Can they see my screen? Can we get a little thumbs up? Yep, yep. Yes, awesome. All right, so let's get going. This is the 2020 PPC case study webinar. What's working now with PPC and really diving into what's coming up for 2021? Once again, my name is Carl Bartling. I'm the PPC manager here at the Hoth. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule and spending it with Bobby and myself. Um, Diving into a little bit about PPC. So um, this webinar is for you. If you really want to generate some consistent leads and sales using PPC without burning thousands in ad spend, we've seen a lot of accounts come across our desk and we find again and again that they just couldn't find, get PPC to work for them when it comes to getting a positive uh, return. Uh, you've been maybe burned in the past or seen no results. So we're actually going to break, break down how we set you up for success with PPC and the method methodology behind it. Um, and you're going to want to see what is working for individuals in your same situation. So it's going to be straight to the point, covering real business PPC case studies. Now, this presentation is designed to show you real-world scenarios. I'll show you exactly how to run profitable campaigns that drive consistent leads and all the components that were built into them. And we're going to actually dive in specifically on strategies you can take and implement immediately after this presentation. So during this presentation, we're going to be covering a lot. 30 to 45 minutes of pure training. And then if you have questions, put them in the chat and Bobby will mark them. Um, in the end, I'm gonna actually show you guys where to get the slides. We're gonna do a 30 minute Q and A. You can ask me anything you want. Plus we have a special deal for those who stick around. So really, really excited. Uh, but my one big goal for today is to actually show you how real businesses are running wildly profitable campaigns 
and generating leads with Google Ads. This is specifically for Google Ads, um, so let's dive on into it. But ultimately, why listen to me? Well, my name is Carl Bartling. I'm the PBC manager here at the Hoth. I opened my first business when I was 17 and landed my first rock star client when I was 18. I have over five years experience in the paid traffic and full funnel build. So actually um, building out your traffic campaigns as well as building out the back end funnel. So um, building out offers, upsells, cross sells and down sells, um, as well as membership sites and much, much more, as well as how somebody learns about your business, opts in and goes in to make a full purchase. Um, now I help manage millions of dollars of ad spend for clients, and I love my wife, cats, all things marketing, and motorcycles. And, you know, why the Hoth? You guys have seen us in the past. You guys may have seen us at a lot of trade shows. You may have seen about SEO. Well, um, you know, we actually not only have been in business since 2010, and we've been handling a lot of SEO throughout the years. We brought on PPC about two years ago, um, and we do a lot of PPC for um, the Hoth internally, and that's how actually... Um, the Hoth was able to grow at such a rapid place. So we got 2020 Inc. Best Workplaces, Inc. 5000. Um, we we're part of some of the Florida awards who are some of the best places to work as well. Um, once again, so you guys may have known us for SEO, but for the past two years, we've been doing PPC as well. We're also a Google partner. So we're specialized in, um, as well as our whole team who manages PPC campaigns, um, all internally are specialized in search ads, video ads, display ads, and we got the shopping ads coming up right away too. Um, but we're super excited to be a Google partner. It actually shows that um, we're able to um, manage certain amounts of ad spend. Um, we're able to uh, t um, retain certain amount of clients um, and making sure that there were enough successful metrics for Google to award us this. So enough about us though, let's dive into these case studies and see what's been happening. Um, a little bit, little bit about these case studies beforehand. They're all part of our Hoth PBC Managed Program. Uh, we actually take over your ad account and do everything you need to get results. And currently, we have over 100 plus clients on this program. So I'm going to actually show you as we go how this can work for different industries, different scenarios, and things like that. And once again, with that Q and A at the end, um, you know, any specific questions you have, feel free to drop them in. So can we get a one in the chat on who re who's ready to go? All right, boom, one, 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 let's go. Yeah, I love it, love the energy today. So guys, case study number one is all about how to turn around a failing campaign and drive hundreds of leads in. So I'm sure plenty of times you guys have maybe run your own campaigns, you've had another agency run them. Um, you know, once again, you may have tested something or you've just got a client that come onto your desk um, and they may have had a failing campaign. So this is gonna help you guys in how we actually went about turning this one around for a client. So this case study is about a local auto dealership who is using another agency for PPC. They, they spent over 70,000 or 70K in ads, but our clients say they really didn't move the needle much for their business. And that was kind of shocking, right? $70,000 in ads that just didn't work or really move that needle forward for the business. Like what was going on? Um, so the first thing that we did was we always start with an audit. So if you have past data, we could see what worked and what didn't. And if something smells a little funky, we will actually find out what it is and really fix it. You guys could see here, it's all about conversions. Um, and during this audit, we found two big takeaways from the audit. One was tracking issues. You know, tracking can be really complex and one small mistake can take you down a path of misleading information. It must be set up properly to track proper leads and sales. I had this little meme in here because track advertising, that's impossible. You know, tracking is one of the most difficult and complex things to do and set up with all the different tools at your disposal. So here's the one big mistake we found with this auto dealership and their past agency. They were actually, they weren't counting leads at all. As you guys can see here, they were actually viewing a key page, which was their inventory. This was not a confirmation page or, um, a, you know, once again, a confirmation page after somebody opted in or, or confirmation page after somebody um, purchase something. This was just viewing the inventory page and most of their conversions, um, over 7,000 of them came from this. Um, and then we had local actions, which were just website visits. So why this won't work and why just viewing a page as a conversion won't work? Well, it doesn't work because we can't measure the right action. We don't really know what leads, where they came from, if the ads are actually driving the calls, which ads are working, which keywords are working, so on and so forth. And this truly makes it impossible to track if the ads are actually working or not working. 
Um, and we found that common tracking conversions, we need to account for when someone takes an, a real action, not just viewing a page after someone fills out a form, do, uh, handles a phone call, or um, actually completes a sale. We're not talking page views, button clicks, et cetera. Now, in some cases, you know, clicks and things could help us understand how people are getting to taking that action, but the form fills, phone calls, and sales are really ones that we want to report on. Number two in the audit, we found that all traffic was going to a homepage, and so this is why you shouldn't use your homepage. All traffic was going to this homepage, and homepages are really built to browse but not capture leads. Plus, there are quite a bit of distracting elements that hurt conversions. You guys can see here on the right-hand side, um, there were so many things going on. You could uh, dot, put, put in that address up at the top. You guys could click on outside links to social media. You could um, start chatting, which chatting is not a bad thing, uh, but then you could also be browsing all over this, the, the um, navigation bar. And there's just so much going on. You kind of feel overwhelmed that you can ultimately end up with a high bounce rate or people clicking around on your website and not really taking any action like those, like those leads, sales, or phone calls. So how do we fix it? We fix it with proper tracking and landing pages ultimately. So you guys could see here um, with a Google ad, we had a Google ad that led to a landing page and confirmation page. Really, really simple stuff, but keep it simple and then grow from there. So we had a specific ad that was served based on the user search. So as you can see, when a used car dealership was typed in, then an ad about all about used cars would come up. And then the landing page, it would all be about used cars as well. And then the confirmation page, that's actually where that conversion was counted because after they opted in, we knew that they actually uh, converted on that confirmation page. And then for phone calls, we actually use the third-party system here, um, Call Rail, to actually record all the phone calls and understand which phone calls were coming from our ads. Um, I know a lot of people mentioned, well, how do you count phone calls? We use a third-party system currently. So by combining some proper tracking and high converting landing pages, we knew exactly what's going on, which ads were working, and we could report properly back to our client because then they could understand which leads were coming in from us and then how much of an ROI was coming from those leads. So the strategy was pretty simple. With that, and we, we, we researched and planned campaigns around high intent keywords, meaning car dealership, used car dealership, car dealership near me. We pre-optimized the campaigns. We designed and implemented high converting landing pages and proper tracking, and we launched a campaign and started optimizing right away. So a lot of agencies we see build out really nice campaigns, uh, but once they launch that campaign, it's kind of sudden and forget it. So we always like to make sure with Hoth PBC that we launch campaign and we're optimizing and managing that daily. So the results are pretty awesome. Remember they spent 70,000 in ad spend right away. We started driving in hundreds of leads coming for them. And now this was actually measurable for them. Uh, we saw nearly immediate results after implementing our strategy. Now they could see which leads came from where, including our ads or other ads, marketing efforts and things like that. And that way they could actually justify their ad spend. So as they mentioned, they spent 70000 in the past, but they didn't really see that needle move forward. You know, with our campaigns, they can actually see where the leads came from and track them down to actual sales. And most importantly, the phone started ringing and the leads started flowing. It was really, really awesome. And one of the big things that we do here with Hoth PBC is we do some preliminary research, right? And so when somebody signs up, we always do preliminary research. And what we found for this client was that their number of leads possible over 90 days was about 337 uh, leads with their budget and their cost per lead was gonna be around $40. Well, the actual results, we got over 752 leads in 90 days. So we doubled their expectations, doubled their amount of leads. And that was a mix of form fills and phone calls. So to kind of recap, in 90 days, we smashed our lead generation goal. We built a full hands-off solution where they focus on selling cars and we focus on bringing the leads in the door. And we gave them true and accurate data to really understand and review its upper management. That was super, super important because not only um, do they understand what's going on and which ads are converting, and which is working, you know, now they could speak with their, uh, with the owners of the actual dealership, with the upper management and show them where that ad spend, where that management money is going to and what the return is on it. And ultimately they save thousands of waste in ad spend and expensive agencies fees. So some major takeaways for everyone on the webinar today. Make sure you're proper, proper you're, sorry, make sure your tracking is properly set up and you're tracking the right things. Remember, phone calls, form fills, sales, things that are actually, people are actually taking actions. 
um, chat if you want to do that as well because uh, you can track all of that and that actually becomes a lead. Use high converting landing pages to capture information, not your homepage. So once again, if somebody's going for a used car dealership, if somebody types that into Google, we want to send them to a dedicated landing page. This is just something that it, it seems like it should be a basic practice and part of industry standard, but we see this again and again when brand new campaigns come across our desk. And optimize your campaigns over time based on the data you collect to continually decrease your costs and increase your conversion. So by adjusting bids and adjusting devices and taking away keywords and all those things, um, and it does add up and it does take a lot of time, but that ultimately will give you the best results. So do you guys see how those few elements made a huge difference? Can I get a thumbs up in the chat? Okay. Well, awesome. Yeah, uh, a couple quick questions before you dive into the next one, though, if you got a second. All right. Yeah, I'll pause it right here. Awesome, guys. Love questions. Boom. Get it, man. Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, all right. So they, uh, Lizabel was curious when a car buying uh, viewer clicks on a Google search ad, they think they're expecting to see an inventory of cars, not a landing page. How did you guys kind of capture that essence in a landing page? Yeah, so that's a great question because when you look at a lot of competitors, it's going to that inventory page. And we so we just position the angle of the offer that they would be opting in for, which is view our specials and in inventory. And um, with their inventory page after after the confirmation page, they always had specials on there. So um, that's exactly what they would be looking at. And of course, it was view our specials and in inventory. And people opted in all day long um, to that offer and that angle. Perfect. One more really quick, um, didn't know, they were curious if you had a um, quote for a cost per conversion on what you were getting on that campaign. Oh yeah, um, so that one I would say for branded stuff, I mean we were around $5 and I would say at the highest we were around $30 with that campaign. Perfect, and last one, you're tracking calls but um, Krizna was curious, does that, that did not include service calls, correct? That was just kind of like new uh, new customer calls. Yeah, correct. So if somebody who's stepping in a used car dealership or, or a car dealership near me, um, we did not have any type of service um, keywords at that time. Now, of course, you could always type in car dealership near me, and if somebody calls about service, that, you know, we, we don't really have too much of a way to get out of those people if they're typing in car dealership. We could add as a negative keyword, but we were not. Um, we were not tracking those service calls. Perfect. That will let you keep going, number two. Thank you. All right, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for the questions. I'm excited to dive into the Q&A because I'm sure we'll have a huge list by then. Uh, but we'll dive into case study number two here. How to reduce a cost per lead by 90% or more in a highly competitive and expensive niche. So this client is in the drug and rehab space, which is one of the most competitive spaces in PBZ. I know you may be thinking lawyers, uh, but drug and rehab is one of the most competitive spaces really. And their average customer value is $30,000. So having a high cost per acquisition, still extremely profitable for this campaign and case study that we're about to show you. And they came to us ultimately wanting to reduce their cost per acquisition and driving consistent leads daily. Um, so the first thing that we always started with was an audit. Once again, it was smelling a little bit fishy, and we saw conversions um, supposedly costing upwards of $23,000. You guys could see there are two here for $23,000, and then there's eight there for $16,000. It was pretty remarkable to see this one. Um, and what we learned from this audit was that we learned that there were mistakes that were costing them thousands of dollars. Um, these issues plague accounts because Google Ads has tons of hidden booby traps that are designed to make Google more money because ultimately Google is an advertising company. You know, they're an advertising platform. So you guys may go on Google, they're the biggest search engine in the world or on the internet, and the way they make their money is from their ads, and that's ultimately how they want to make more and more money. Uh, so the first example of this we found was the search partner's checkbox. Um, now, I know a lot of people are probably going to their ad account right now and double checking that this is on or off. Uh, we see it all the time. Um, so why search matters? Google's power is actually through, this, is through the search intent of their search platform. So as you guys can see on the right, if you type in luxury rehab, somebody's actually looking for that. Uh, they have an interest in luxury rehab. And then you guys can see all the ads that come up for luxury rehab. So people trust Google and search on Google.com with exactly what they are looking for. They need to find answers to their problem. 
They need to find a solution. And that's why the power of PBC is so powerful. But that's why search matters so much. But inside of Google Ads, there's actually a hidden setting called search partners. I'm sure a lot of times when you set up a campaign in the past, you may have seen this, or even an agency that you may have worked with in the past, they may have just seen it and just gone by it. It's a tiny little checkbox that's on by default. Once again, Google wants to make more. This puts your ads on their partner sites, which are often sites you don't want to show up on. In all our experience, this can dramatically reduce your results and eat up your budget. And the reason for this is just because you're not getting that high intent traffic that's searching on google.com. We also found with search and display uh, placements that we get really low intent placements and that this is just not where we want our ads to be. So this first one that I highlighted here was beer100.com was this was in the past campaigns in the audit. Um, and we found that why would you want to run, you know, on beer100.com and 99% of people are probably people looking to learn more about beer and home brewing. Um, I really doubt they're looking on this website in terms of that they're looking for a luxury rehab right now for them or their loved one. Um, and now they may, someone may need a luxury rehab center, but they're not actively looking for it. You know, with Google and PPC in general, we're looking for people who are looking for that right now. And that's why those leads are so much powerful and ready to take action. Another big one that we found was jailbase.com. Uh, jailbase is all about, you can just look up people who got arrested and find their information. Once again, most of these people on here are not actively searching or looking for or in the, or in the market for a luxury rehab for themselves or a loved one. So it's really, really important that we don't put our ads on these sorts of sites. Um, and ultimately search partners by eliminating this, we actually saw the cost go down and the conversions go up because once again, our budget is being utilized just to google.com. I see this day in and day out with all the accounts that come across our desk. This is usually set up. This is usually ticked off. Even some of the biggest agencies that have sent work over to us, they always include this just because once again, it's on by default and Google actually warns you um, that most advertisers include their ads on Google search partners. So you kind of automatically think, well, well, Google's right, right? You know, Google, Google's, Google's here. They're giving me this recommendation. Well, you know, we found, we've proven success of having search partners off um, and campaigns going up. Um, the next big one is search partners is just one example of many ways that advertisers are losing money that they don't even know about. We know all these tricks and eliminate all of them aggressively to save you money. So we pre-optimize our campaigns with uh, quality campaign setup to make sure you guys aren't wasting money on these irrelevant placements. And so the big strategy that we found with this uh, company was that we fixed all the booby traps and eliminated search partners. We rebuilt all their campaign using high intent keywords and we focused on exact match and phrase match keywords to really hone it in. As you guys can see on the right hand side, Malibu drug rehab, inpatient drug rehab, and drug rehab centers in California. So I knew if you typed this in into Google, you'd see a lot of competitors bidding on this. But I also knew somebody who's searching for this, that they were looking for this solution for themselves or a loved one. They were looking for a drug rehab center or they were looking for an inpatient. Inpatient was great, right? Because inpatient means that you're actually staying at a drug rehab facility. That means that's where that big money's coming for for our client. And then drug rehab centers in California, once again, somebody searching for that, um, most of the time they are looking for a solution. Uh, we also created some compelling ads that we, that we got really high click-through rates with and we set up high converting uh, landing pages. Once again, you guys can see even from case study one, there's kind of a, a very similar process here, a similar strategy. We use high intent keywords. We really focused on our ads. We really, really focused on our landing pages. Uh, but we weren't done there yet. This one really, since there was so much competition, we really need to go above and beyond. One thing that we were focused on in particular with this was the quality of lead. Um, and we actually added copy to both the ads and landing pages to pre-qualify our prospects. So you guys can see here, insurance accepted, no Medicare or Medicaid. So on our landing page, there, there's not that green box. I like to always say that. Um, we just did that to highlight for the webinar. But we accepted insurance for this client, but they didn't accept Medicare or Medicaid. So we want to make sure that, they, that we said that right there on the ad as well as the landing page. Um, and then we also found that this market often didn't want to fill out a form because this is highly personal, right? There's a lot of, a lot of confidential information going across. So we gave our prospects the option to fill out a form or call in. And we made sure to have on the landing page throughout that they could check their insurance or they could call their staff directly. And we tracked all of it like a boss. The results were truly awesome. 
Um, so we saw a massive lead increase right away. Um, and then we were able to bring down their lead costs dramatically. So on average, we saw those leads uh, beginning uh, be about $23,000, $16,000. But those weren't really being tracked properly. We found that the bulk amount of leads were still anywhere from three to $7,000. Um, afterwards, with all of our systems in place, tracking form fills properly, tracking those actual phone calls, we were able to get our leads anywhere from $63 all the way to $424 in a highly, highly competitive space. And ultimately, we scaled our campaigns to $18,000 plus per month in ad spend, getting them consistent results uh, with that cost per conversion just hanging out at around $110. So even with them, they had a $30,000 um, you know, uh, customer lifetime value uh, usually. So if they even close 10% of their leads, that, that cost per um, acquisition for them would be right around that thousand or $1,200 and they would get 30,000 returns. So the math made sense for them all day long. So the results we built and ultimately scaled the lead generation machine. We brought down their lead costs from thousands to hundreds of dollars and their phones are ringing daily and we drove in qualified leads for them. It was truly awesome and we got, this is one of the things that I love that myself and my team get to experience all the time with Hoth PBC is, um, you know, seeing the little testimonies like this, they've provided the best PP camp, PPC campaign experience of any company we've worked with, not only in their knowledge and performance, but also with the way they work with us and keep us in the loop with everything they do at all times. So this was really awesome. Uh, some big takeaways. There are tons of Google booby traps that can cost you thousands of dollars if you don't know what to look for. So like search partners. Um, there's also automatic account adjustments. This is going to be done under account settings. Even in a competitive market, there are always ways to improve results. And we don't just focus on the numbers, we focus on the quality of leads. So remember, they wanted insurance, they wanted people coming through with insurance, but without Medicare or Medicaid. Um, and with that being said, that's why we had to do the pre-optimization and pre-vetting on our ad copy and landing page copy. So remember, it's not about just the number of leads, it's about the quality of leads. So they're closing and making money. So boom, I'll make I'll take a um, I'll take a second there, Bobby. Do we have any questions coming in? Couple. Let me scroll up and find them here. All right, awesome. Just a couple uh, about the search network. Um, Jeff was wondering if checking the display network uh, is similar to search network. Do you keep both of those disabled? Yeah, um, uh, Jeff, I believe was his first name. Uh, yes, we disable both of those. Gotcha. Yep. Both are turned off. Awesome. And then, then uh, one more question from Pepper. Uh, how do I check to turn off search partners for a campaign that is already running? She said she's looking now and does not see anything. Yep, so you're gonna click on the campaign, you go to the left navigation all the way down to the bottom at settings, and on that settings panel, you'll see search partners. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple more, but we're gonna save those for the Q&A, so we'll uh, let you keep rolling here. All right, awesome. Remember, guys, there's a lot of information. Keep taking notes, but we'll go over the Q&A at the end. I'm very excited about that. So our final case study was making phone making phones ring for a local business. So with all these case studies, I want you guys just to imagine all the different pieces that could go into a campaign for your business and how that could work for you. Um, so let's see here. All right, so this was actually for a local dentist who was running their own smart campaigns. They were bringing in leads, but they wanted more out of the campaign as a whole. Um, they were spending around a thousand per month on ad spend and they were receiving 40 uh, consistent leads for $43. Their conversions were a mix of directions, phone calls and form fills. So, you know, when I saw this audit first, I'll be honest, I said $43 for a dentist, not too bad. All right. The conversions were just a mix of directions that, uh, you know, we don't really want to make directions, but phone calls and form fills, I mean, they were doing pretty good. Um, so overall it wasn't too bad. The initial audit, I found was performing, like I mentioned, but we really wanted to report solely on calls and form fills. And the campaign was a smart campaign with very limited controls. So even if I wanted to manage that current campaign or adjust that campaign, with a smart campaign, I couldn't do so much. So what are smart campaigns and do they really work for lead generation? Uh, smart campaigns are the default for new ad accounts. Once again, this is a major booby trap. Um, a lot of times when you set up a brand new Google ad account, you don't even have access to the expert mode, as it would be called. Um, these have very little control or levers to pull once we start a campaign. So in smart campaigns, you can add negative keywords, which means 
your ads won't show up for specific words like DIY or do yourself or free or cheap. Um, there's no search term reports. There's no specific conversion settings and much, much more. These are automatically all set up by Google once you go and set up the campaign. They do it all for you. It's a done for you, basically. Um, but we've seen ultimately that these just for lead generation do not get the best results. As you guys can see here, the smart campaign backend, it's kind of like a dashboard. It's not really much of a, we can't make too many adjustments, right? So it's more of a dashboard and we can't really go in and, and adjust things and, and kind of dial it all in. Uh, so with smart campaigns, you guys can see that they seem really nice and simple to new advertisers. I mean, you know, I could probably go on here and less than two minutes set up a smart campaign, but you generally end up paying more when you don't have control over standard search campaigns. And also the lead quality is usually much, much less or, or not as high as a standard campaign because you lose a lot of that control. Over 50% of clients that come to us are using actually smart campaigns and losing because of it. And the reason for it is because that's the standard with Google now. Once again, um, that is just a standard and it's one of those booby traps. And standard search campaigns, you get so much, much more control. In this one screenshot, there are over 10 different areas where we can actually adjust and optimize the campaign. So you can adjust things by your ads, by your ad groups, your bids, your budgets, uh, your demographics, your keywords. Locations and much, much more. There's a lot of different controls with standard campaigns and people are losing money um, and they're not really getting their full campaign's potential out of by using a smart campaign. So once after seeing this and reviewing the smart campaign, there wasn't as much we could dive into with the other campaigns, uh, but the strategy was this. We would rebuild the current campaigns by removing unqualified traffic sources, once again, search partners and display. We set up proper tracking systems. We wanna attract form fills and phone calls. We want to focus on high intent keywords like emergency dental. I knew if somebody was typing in emergency dental that our ads need to show up because they offered that. And that would also mean somebody, I mean, literally has an emergency right now. They have, they're in pain. They wake up and they're in the middle of the night. They have a toothache and they need help right now. And then also we created a copy that just commanded click. So once again, somebody was typing emergency dental, that ad that showed up was all about emergency dental. And then we set up landing pages built to turn visitors into leads. And so with the new search campaign, uh, we focus on one service compared to multiple service in the smart campaign. So let me show you guys that real quick. And the smart campaign here, um, we can see here on the search phrases, teeth implants, dentist, dental implants, teeth whitening, um, dental implant, dentist, dental implants, dental implants, um, all those. So they were focused really on a lot of different, um, they were focused on a lot of different services. So we wanted to focus on one service um, and then we set up specific tracking for calls and form fills and we drove traffic to a specific landing page around the service and had it all dialed in with demographic and device bit adjustments. So as you guys can see here, um, emergency dentist, um, it brought up that it was all about emergency dentists. We're still open and available, right? 2020, we want to make sure that those businesses, you know, you know, we don't know which businesses are open and not open now and we wanted to make sure that that, um, that that user could show up um, and show that they're still open and available and ready to go and take on business. And the results are pretty cool. So um, with, with pre-Hoth PPC, the smart campaigns, they had a $43 cost per conversion and the conversion rate was around 3.85%. And with Hoth PPC with some optimized search campaigns, we had a cost per conversion of $13 and a conversion rate of 30 over 36% we reduced their cost per lead nearly by 70%. It was really, really awesome. So the results, now their cost per lead or CPL is below $15 a piece. We nearly 10X their conversion rate, and now they're getting consistent phone calls and form fills. So some major takeaways for this one is smart campaigns can work in certain circumstances, but standard campaigns oft, often offer much more control. So by following a comprehensive strategy, you guys can massively reduce your costs and get more leads in the door, which is the name of the game. You guys wanna get more leads, get more sales, grow your business and continue to scale. So here's what the client said. A client had to say, I'm very satisfied with the Hoth. The service is outstanding. And most importantly, my client is getting consistent results. Thank you so much for all your help. So this was actually a reseller and we white labeled all the work to that business. So do you ultimately see how this can work in any niche? Can I get a one in the chat? One, 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 nice, awesome guys. So this was an automotive, health and wellness, a local dentist, but you may say, Carl, what about this industry? What about this? 
Well, that's it. I mean, we've worked with so many, but that's truly not all. We've worked with web design, cosmetology schools, cremation, electricians, dating services, auto dealerships, limo, bus rental, hotels, hypnotists, plumbers, uh, basement waterproofing, SEO agencies, pest control, much, much more. We've worked with over 100 niches, um, and we and these this strategy works again and again, um, and not only helping people at a local level, but on a national and a worldwide level. So ultimately, I know you guys would probably like to get results for, these, for your business or your, or your client's business. So let's see how we can help. The problem is that most people don't know where to start. Um, I find that PBC can be very confusing on the best approach. Um, when people come to us, they ask us what they can do for PBC, how, they, how we can help, and what they're doing wrong. They find very confused. And you can literally burn thousands of dollars in ad spend if you're not properly managing your campaign. Um, and then you might have been turned off by past marketing agencies because you spent a lot of money, you really didn't see a return, and we want to help alleviate that. So when I came in two years ago to the Hoth, um, Clay and I got together and Bobby, and we created the solution which is called Hoth PPC. Uh, Hoth PPC is our done for you, all in one lead generation service. Everything that we just talked about in the cases, we handle it for you. We get your input during an onboarding call, and then we build out the strategy for you. So this is the best way to truly start generating high quality leads from Google Ads on autopilot. So a team is dedicated to driving leads and ultimately helping your business grow. Instead of worrying about all the hidden settings, buttons, booby traps, we put together an expert team equipped with an advanced strategy to get you stellar results. So here's how it works. When you join PBC, we ask you a few questions to get started. We do some pre-research, and that actually helps us get the cost per lead and number of leads so you can reasonably expect for your budget. And we'll set expectations at the beginning so you know exactly what you'll be getting. Uh, you also have a dedicated campaign manager. Everyone's Google Ads certified. Um, your campaign manager is your direct contact and the one who that works directly with you on your campaign. During your onboarding, we'll ask you a set of questions that help us dig into your target customer. And this helps us with keyword research, crafting the ad copy, and writing the perfect landing page. Then from there, we do some actually research and campaign planning. Through a proven process, we research your competitors. We see what kind of offers they are running. We research keywords to target and form them into tight ad groups. So remember, if somebody was stepping in a used car dealership, an ad for a used car dealership would come up. We write compelling ads designed to get for a high click-through rate with a nice offer, and we even do pre-optimization by researching negative keywords before we even spend a penny. On top of that, we build high converting landing pages. So all landing pages are included in the price of Hoth PPC. We'll actually write and design high converting landing pages they're beautiful, they match your brand, and proven to, high, uh, to convert highly. And then finally, we go live and optimize. So once we have your approval, we go live and start monitoring your results. We check your account daily and perform strategic series of optimizations. On top of that, we have transparent reporting because this is very important. I want to make sure you guys can see what's going on inside of your Google Ad campaign at all times. You guys can see the dashboard and your leads 24 7. And finally, you got to be in the know how. So, we have once again transparency with weekly reports and monthly strategy calls. We talk about reviewing performance, lead quality, follow up processes, and much more. We're just not about being a traffic expert. Your campaign manager, they are your lead generation expert on speed dial. We're talking about figuring out lead quality, how to follow up with them, and so much more. Truly all in one. We created this to be a truly all in one Google Ads management service that goes above and beyond more than just paid advertising. So, for everyone who stayed on this webinar, we have a special webinar offer for you guys. As a way of saying thanks for sticking on this uh, webinar, we're going to give you half off your first month of Hoth PVC when you sign up for three months. So, that's $250 value, half off in the first month. So, let's talk about how we can start generating leads on demand for you or your client. You guys can book a call here at thehoth.com slash rock. We can talk about PPC, what you guys learned in the webinar, and also um, talk about the offer that we have going on right now for all the webinar attendees. That's 50% off your first month with a three month agreement. And we've been getting some really, really great results and reviews. We have this e-commerce PPC client that we reduced their cost per lead by 85%. Working with Hoth PVC has been a real pleasure. My account manager, Carl Barling, has been very hands-on with our campaigns, has made great progress within only a few months. With a drug rehab client, 
drove 70, 752 leads for the auto dealership, 1,400 plus leads for local retailer in six months. That was a fun one because a local business driving 1,400 leads for them at a local level, I mean, that was huge. We had a 532% ROAS or return on ad spend for an e-commerce store. Uh, your PBC campaign has brought in more revenue than any other marketing efforts I've done in the past decade. Um, let's see. This one was for another dentist. My campaign manager has gone above and beyond repeatedly. Working with her has been like having our own in-house PBC department. And so ultimately, guys, um, do you guys want these types of results? Uh, let's get a one in the chat. If you guys want to see some automated leads coming into your into your business or your client's business. Can we get a one in the chat? One, one, one. Nice. Awesome, because we have more of that coming. So once again, Amazon account lawyers, dating services, local dentists, all when the campaign first started, web design development, hyperbaric chamber sales, hypnotists, drug and alcohol, med spa clinic, iPhone repair. So anyone out there with an iPhone repair company, you all know that it got broken down by Google. They stopped showing in about 2018, early 2019. And this actually, we've been able to work with our Google rep to actually get a iPhone. We have actually three iPhone repair companies now live and approved running ads for them. Media buying software, oral surgeon, personal injury lawyer, pest control, private school, apartment finder service, scooter and motorbike rental, local SEO agency. The, the list goes on and on. doesn't matter what niche you're in, our services and our strategy works with, when it comes to PPC. And we have plans starting at only $500 per month. But who's this best for? We want to make sure everyone's the right fit. So you must be generating consistent sales. You must be able to spend a thousand per month, and you must be able to commit to three months. So if you want to start filling your sales pipeline, book a call now at thehoth.com/rock. Bobby will drop that in. So guys, I know we went through a lot. Uh, we went pretty quick. So let's dive into this, some Q and A. Remember, you guys can book your call and talk about the webinar special at thehoth.com/rock. And remember, mention that how you can get 50% off your first month uh, with Hoth PBC. We have quite a few questions. There's still more trickling in here. Uh, I'm going to switch over to our questions tab here. And uh, let's jump into it. We'll let you take a sip of water, Carl, and relax for a minute. Nice, right, thanks. <laughs> Almost an hour straight at this point. But no. our first question comes from Jude. Uh, what do you do when you find high intent or long tail keywords, but there's little volume associated with those keywords? Yeah, so, uh, the, I mean, we can still put them in, but just the, the base of the campaign won't be built off of them. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, Sandra would like to know, um, you know, we, we did kind of talk about search partners a little bit, but are there any niches or situations where using search partners uh, might be appropriate? Depends on the business and depends on the offer. So we've had some offers that are like free videos um, and it's not like uh, booking a consultation or get a free web design mock-up. So the offer is a little bit different. So yeah, we've, we've had a few where it's like get a free video or, you know, opt into this blog and search partners seem to work okay, but 99% of businesses that we work with, we don't typically put search partners on at first. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, uh, for a couple questions about how white labeling our services work. Uh, 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 Brennan and Alex, they wanna know, how does the white label onboarding and communication with the campaign manager work? Uh, sorry, Bobby, you broke up a little bit. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, uh, Alex and Brendan had a question about how uh, white label onboarding works with us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with that, with uh, with white label, you know, we don't speak to the client or your client. You send everything over to us, so we send you guys. We can either do a call or we have a sheet you guys can fill out, and we build everything from there. Gotcha. So it's a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of being the middleman, but you, once that onboarding is done and there's really not a whole lot to do besides from the monthly reporting and whatnot. All right, let's move on here. Uh, Heather had a good question as well. Um, do you, 
when you're running their PPC campaigns, do you do it in their Google Ads account or in our own Google Ads account for them? Yeah, so um, we can set up a Google Ad account or we can do it right in their Google Ad account, uh, but they completely own the Google Ad account at the end of the day. Gotcha. So even if they do stop using our services, the account is still in their name and they can run with it if they wanted to. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, all right. Let's go on to Lucas. How do you handle the recommended changes Google suggests uh, about Google ad accounts? Do you take the quality score um, of the account seriously? Uh, the quality score we do, I mean, we try to get a 5 out of 10 minimum. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're not going to be able to get a 10 out of 10. It's just, just, it's just not the way it works. Google recommendations, though, uh, we don't take that seriously. Once again, uh, they tend to uh, want us just to spend more money. <laughs> yes, avoid those booby traps. Yep. Um, now, speaking of quality score here, uh, Nira wants to know, how do you improve landing page experience, um, specifically regarding the quality score? She says, we make sure that we're using a combination of keywords that we're bidding on plus we ensure that the ad copy matches what we have on the lander, but they can't seem to improve their landing page experience. How do you help them out here, Carl? Yeah, so you may have to kind of take, first off, if it's a major issue, you may have to actually resubmit the keywords and try to get it a new quality score. But the first thing that I would start with is make sure that the landing page speed um, is below two or three seconds when it, when it opens. Mobile optimization is good. It's um, good, readable content. I'm not talking about big blocks copy, but small blocks, and it's all related to maybe your main keyword, so or a seed keyword. So, like say, used car dealership. That landing page is all about used cars, um, and go from there. So, just make sure your landing pages have one theme to them. I would start from there. All right, Maddie wants to know um, how would you recommend handling campaigns. Uh, when the company offers multiple valuable services? Um, I would build that, we build out specific campaigns based off of one service. So if we had a roofer and they offered roofing, siding, you know, window, you know, windows, uh, we, would, we would build them out three campaigns because we want to be able to control those levers and how much we spend on each service because each service has a different ROI. Yeah, for, uh, for what we do internally for the Hoth, you know, every month we have a few different sales and promos and every single one gets its own campaign every month. We don't try and lump them all together into one giant one, build out mm -hmm. separate campaigns. Yep. All right, moving on here. Um, Frank wants to know, can you talk a little bit about geo-targeting and excluding locations? I notice I target certain areas, but my ads are still shown in other countries, which is not good. I have to exclude certain countries and targeting every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, once again, this is another booby trap is when you set up location settings, it should be on people who live in or actively in your location, not the, um, there's like a general Google one that they give that we don't use at all. Gotcha. Those booby traps, they're everywhere. Uh, Krizna wants to know, what are your feelings on smart bidding strategies? Um, max clicks, max conversions, target CPA, max conversion rate. What do you like to do? We always start with manual CPC or manual cost per click. Um, target CPA, we've used it sometimes in the past after maybe six to 12 months worth of data that might be overkill. Uh, but we've actually seen the quality of leads go down. When we give up that control, uh, we prefer to we prefer to really get a nice campaign built and prime it up and, and get it in a good spot manually. Uh, the only time we ever use an automated strategy um, is typically with Google Shopping. Gotcha, gotcha. Now this was actually a popular question from Sadiq. Multiple other people wanted to uh, know the answer to this, including Olivia. But uh, how do you get leads for SaaS products? I know this has come up in past trainings we've done too. Popular question here. Yeah, once again, it's gonna all come down to the offer. Um, so typically most people wanna see a demo first. So it could be, you know, opt in with name and email to get a demo. 
Um, they want to, they just need something a little bit before a consultation or purchase or anything like that. So it needs to be pretty far back. Uh, it could be a free, free download. You just need to get really creative on your different lead magnets. All righty. Uh, Kristen wants to know, um, for an e-commerce website, do you recommend um, pushing people to a landing page like you've talked about today, or would that be an exception where you could push people directly to the product page? Yeah, so great question. So, um, yeah, that is an exception. For shopping, we go directly to the product pages. And then with remarketing, sometimes we'll go directly to the product pages or build out a landing page. So we're collecting information because we're building up your email list as well as giving them like a five or 10% discount just to get them back. Smart. I like it. All right. Let's see. Uh, Haley actually had a question uh, about CRMs. What CRMs slash leads management software um, are best to kind of link with your Google ads account and landing page? Um, yeah, so it really depends on its needs, right? Uh, a CRM could go all the way from just holding your email, so like something like MailChimp, but for most businesses for that are just starting out with a CRM, you don't want to be too overwhelmed with functionality. You want a good um, intuitive design, easy to use. Um, so I usually recommend like HubSpot. Yeah, that's what I've seen too. HubSpot is great for people starting out all the way up to some good-sized businesses too. All right, Zach, do you guys uh, like to use the SCAGS methodology for campaign setup? Yeah, um, not for setup. We'll typically do it sometimes if we just can't get a really, really good quality score on a keyword. We'll sometimes use SCAGS. Um, it's not part of our first initial campaign setup just because we can go in there after the campaign's running and we have actual data from Google and from the market, then we'll make SCAGS. And for those of you who do not know, SCAGS is an acronym that stands for Single Keyword Ad Group. I don't even yeah. know if Carl knew that I knew that, but I do know. <laughs> oh, just look that out. Awesome. <laughs> um, my fingers are fast on Google. Just kidding. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, Brett wants to know, uh, what was the attribution model used um, back on, I believe it was case study number one. Was it a CPC or a CPA campaign? Uh, it was CPC and the attribution was, uh, if we were looking at conversion tracking, strategy, uh, bidding strategy was manual CPC. And then the attribution for that setting, for the conversion setting was last click. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mary, a quick question about apps. Um, is there a way to track app downloads um, from Google desktops in search campaigns? Uh, I'm sure there is. To be honest, I've never done an app campaign. I, and, um, yeah, I, I really don't know, so I'll just be honest on that one. But I'm sure there is because they have the whole app uh, campaign build that you can do. We just don't typically work with apps. Yeah, because I even know, you know, myself working with Facebook ads a lot, uh, there's a, mm -hmm. you know, campaign type right in there to try and get app downloads. So if Facebook's yeah. got it, something tells me Google and do it too. Yep. All righty. Uh, let's pop back up to the top here. Uh, Eric, for shopping campaigns, what is the best strategy to prevent ads from being delivered to queries not related to your products? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so you can actually add negative keywords in, um, and so that'll help. So go through your search term report and then add in negative keywords. Now, if you're running a smart shopping campaign, remember, guys, smart shopping, you lose a lot of control. You can't add in those negative keywords, but with a standard shopping campaign, you can. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Bobby, really quick before we get into the next question, I'd love to ask a question myself. You know, what are some of, you know, we still got quite a few people on here. What are your guys' biggest challenges or thoughts going into 2021? And what are those questions that Bobby or I could answer maybe towards the end of this? Yeah, let's start thinking about next year, too. Yep. Uh, Cody wants to know, what is the best high intent keyword strategy? Do you use Google recommended keywords or do you insert your own with exact match? Ooh. Uh, yeah, we always start with exact or phrase match, but we find keywords through through Google as well as uh, 
Semrush or Ahrefs. Gotcha. Well, we're getting to the next one here again. Go to thehawk.com slash rock. Go ahead and book that strategy session now. Um, again, if you have – I see some industry-specific questions coming up. If you want to know uh, how to do this for XYZ industry or, you know, anything – that's what the call is for. We're probably not going to get into industry specific questions on this training, but go ahead and book your free call. We'd be more than happy to take a deep dive with you on the call. All right, a few more left here. Uh, what are some things uh, you typically check for when optimizing campaigns? Um, it's definitely going to be the offer. It's going to be, uh, I mean, it really depends on where the stage of the campaign is. Um, it's going to be keywords that we're using, making sure that the keyword traffic is clean. So look at the search term report, device bid adjustments. Um, we're going to be looking at, um, you know, demographics. I mean, there's a, there's a huge list of them, but uh, really depends on the stage of the campaign. So if that individual could give us a little bit more information about, um, about where the campaign's at, then maybe we can help with that and I can give a more focused answer. Yeah, go ahead and book that call. We can uh, take a look for you. All right, let me get back in the chat here and find some more questions because I know we have quite a bit coming in here. Yeah, um, and I see one from uh, Andy. Will you do uh, YouTube ads as well? So currently, um, that's going to be an add-on in the future, but if you have a YouTube video ready to go, we will include it uh, with Hoth PBC. So and the, the, um, and the special right now will apply to uh, building on search, remarketing, and search uh, YouTube ads with that. Perfect. A couple more questions coming in about the uh, video replay. Uh, again, we'll be sending out an email to all registrants tomorrow with uh, this recording, and also we'll also send you the slide deck so you can reference it later on as well. So do not worry, Armando, if you missed it. We will send you, <laughs> we'll send you a replay tomorrow. All right, it looks like we got one from Greg right here at the end. How can we find out where, how the conversion is being counted? Yeah, so Greg, if you go to the top right-hand side, you'll see tools and settings. Um, click on that when you're in your ad account. It's in the top right-hand navigation bar. Under um, conversions, click on conversions and you'll see your conversions there. Um, you'll see the conversion set up. Now click in the specific conversion you're looking for and uh, there will be two tabs at the very top. One will say the settings and one will say web pages. And you'll see where that tag is firing off of in terms of the web page. But that should uh, hopefully give you enough information to give you do enough damage when, uh, when doing a little bit of an audit. Perfect. Question from David here, kind of talking about the offer, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, what do you think is better to get a lead um, in the health and fitness space? Would you offer... A uh, discount, like a 33% discount or a free consultation? What do you think it hits harder, Carl? You know, fitness is hard. It really is. And uh, you would think it wouldn't be as difficult because everybody wants it, right? Everybody in some sense wants to be healthier, you know, maybe you know, lose some weight, look better, uh, be stronger. You know, people just want it. So uh, I find that most people, free consultation doesn't typically do it. And the reason being is because people want to try it before they really commit. And the reason being is because a lot of times with like personal trainers or even gyms, you got to really go in and feel comfortable yourself with that personal trainer or the gym or the program and be like, wow, I could really commit to this. So we find that offering maybe three free sessions, a free session, um, you know, something of that nature, which can basically be a consultation, but just name it something else. Um, is going to be work best to really get people in the door. Perfect. Uh, Tom had a quick question on our landing pages, the ones that we create for each campaign. Uh, how are those hosted? Where are they hosted? Yeah, that's a great question. So everything's hosted on our system, and the reason for that is just because we can build that out very quickly, as well as, um, as very quickly as well as set up proper tracking. We can also split test in the future. So we host everything ourselves. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that is it. If we did not get to your questions, go ahead and book a free call with us. We'd be happy to chat. Again, we can take a nice deep dive into your business and your industry. Um, but other than that, that is all it. All she wrote for today, 
I'll let you close it out, Carl. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Once again, check out the hoth.com rock slash rock. As Bobby said, thank you guys so much for spending the last hour with us. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to respond to Bobby. Can they respond to the email? How can they kind of get questions back out to us? Is it best just to book a call? Yeah, it's best to book a call. Um, and then or if not, you can always open a ticket up with support and that'll get routed to our PPC department as well. Either way. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. I look forward to hearing from people on the phone calls as well as the recording will be going out tomorrow. Bobby will shoot out an email with all that. Um, and then you'll begin the slide deck as well. So thanks again, everyone. Hope you have a great day. Happy holidays. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.